In this video, we're going to show you how to clamp stuff to your work surface when you're using the XS Tech router uh, by Tormach. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do it, and if you remember in the unboxing video, there were some strap clamps that came with it. And here are all the parts, and today we're going to show you how to use these as well as some other methods of holding work down on the table. So let's just take the parts we're not going to use away. take the parts that we're going to use. Let's use the bolts and the slots. Clamp goes on top. I'm going to put my piece of material in the clamp. Make sure you use the washer. So the way that it works, this pivots on this part and allows you to tighten on both sides. This just happens to be a larger piece. You can also, if you're going to use shorter uh, or thinner or flat stock, you can use the shorter ones and accomplish the same, uh, the same goal. Just make sure that as you're writing your code and you're running your uh, uh, program, watch out for the two bolts that are sticking up here too. And this then assumes that you're going to have to square your material. Notice in this segment where Jim is using a machinist square to actually square the stock so that it's square with the tool and the table. He's going to place also the bolts in the strap clamp so that the square can fit right underneath it up against the stock assuring that your piece is square on the table. In this example, we're going to use double-sided sticky tape to hold a piece of circuit board to a sacrificial piece of wood. And then we're going to use the clamps to hold the whole thing down to the table square. Note that after he peels off the, the, the tape, sticks it to the piece of wood, He's then going to reposition the clamps so that the clamps are also holding down the piece of copper as well. This will allow you to increase your speeds and feeds as you machine the, the material, uh, making for a faster machine time. Another way to hold stuff down onto your table is to use a sacrificial uh, piece of material uh, like this. Uh, so basically all this is is a quarter inch piece of plywood and I've got a couple extra things on here I drew three lines these lines are going to line up with the slots in the table so that I can attach stuff through the piece of wood um, if I had it to do over again I would make this about half size and then I would have this on half my table and the other half I would have open so that I could use my my clamps as well but this is what I've got with me, so this is, uh, this is what I'm going to show you how to, how to use. So the sacrificial material, it also protects your work surface so that if the kids mess up in the Z, you've got time to stop it before it hits your piece of aluminum. And it's also really good if you notice this here, this area here, I was cutting circuit boards before, and I was actually cutting the circuit boards out and drilling holes. And you can go all the way through the material uh, using the sacrificial board and you don't have to worry about hitting the piece of aluminum. So I just attached it with uh, some quarter 20 bolts. It was kind of a pain to get it all lined up but once you got it on you were good to go. I also used lock nuts on it 
to hold it in place so that the vibration from the machine uh, didn't accidentally cause it to loosen. And again, notice that these lines on my table, on my piece of material, are lined up with the slots on the side. That will become useful later. There, now that it's mounted, we can take some flat stock. For instance, uh, one of the projects we're going to do later is a nameplate project. And here's an example of a piece of material. Uh, some people call it Romark, that's the brand name, uh, but it's just a piece of double thickness material, white on the bottom, blue on the top. You can engrave through the top and get the white. Uh, it comes in many, many colors, but all we do with this really is use some carpet tape double-sided carpet tape three little pieces is all you need if you put a whole piece on there it'll take it'll be really really hard to get it off this material then again using the squaring method you want to make sure it's square use your square and just stick it down to the table and you're good to go you're ready to machine uh, when you're all done you'll be able to see that it'll peel up the material will peel up it'll be hard to do but you can use a putty knife or you can use a screwdriver as well. Um, that also works. The same method will work on circuit board material as well. Um, the downside to with the circuit board, if you're taking deep cuts and you're going really fast, uh, it tends to move around a lot. So what I did was I pre-drilled some holes. Notice they're on the lines so that they go through where the slots are in the table. And I can put double-sided sticky tape on the back when I did it, I put one on each one of these three pieces, so it's the piece, once it gets cut out, it stays attached to the table. Notice, too, this is a, a scrap now, because as I came around with just the double-sided sticky tape and it dove through the material, it moved, so then I, I couldn't use this anymore. I'll cut them out and use the, uh, the boards, but I'd rather have it do it all in one move. So what I can do now is I can take this, put it on my board, the double-sided sticky tape, three pieces, stick it down. Um, notice the material is a lot bigger than it needs to be so that it doesn't have to be exactly square. Then what I can do is I can just use a couple pan, pan head screws with my double-sided stick. I've never done this without the double-sided sticky tape because I don't want those three pieces to come flying out of the machine when they're done. So then once you get so now these three pieces are being held in with the double sided sticky tape and these two flathead screws will hold the whole piece of material down so you can go much faster in the cuts around the outside edges. Uh, like I said again this is a great idea. Best case scenario I think would be to make this piece of sacrificial material smaller. Uh, then you could use this on one side, leave it mounted permanently. Then you can use the step clamps as a device or anything else over on the other side as well. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to hold your material down. And now I guess you're ready to start making stuff.